Welcome back, everyone. It's 11-3 uh, of 2015. We're going to continue on with uh, Jean Hippolyte and his uh, treatise on uh, the phenomenology of Hegel. This is our second lesson, and we're uh, the previous lesson we took a look at um, the realm of the uh, sensate object, the sensate subject, and then a uh, sensation as a relation between subject and object, and that transi transitioned us into the realm of uh, perception that wants to move on to understanding. And so this lesson is going to address the level of consciousness which evolves out of the sensate and we will address uh, the middle two blocks of our chart 4a and 4b and it will deal very sp specifically with transitioning out of the sensate realm into consciousness and in consciousness moving on to the level of understanding rather than simply intuition. We're going to transition into understanding and into consciousness. Not yet formal self-consciousness, but into uh, the higher understanding of consciousness evolving out of intuition. In doing this, we enter into a realm that uh, Hippolyte reminds us is the realm of the common grasping of form and the common grasping of object and subject and so the common eye becomes very apparent here we move into uh, consciousness and the desire to achieve a more universal understanding commonality and intersubjectivity enter in and it is pretty much the realm of uh, what we would uh, equate with Aristotle's Dokunta threshold as that uh, threshold of reciprocal dialogue of the uh, for itself and the for another, the dialogue between for itself and for another. So we're entering enter the realm of the Takunta threshold, the realm of dialogue, and the realm of consciousness and higher understanding. We want to begin by looking at block 4a. And as I said, we're moving up on the chart. The lower sensate realm of the mind is moving into the middle realm of the mind and the consciousness and from there we'll move on up even further into self-consciousness eventually. But right now take a look at 4a. It's the transition to consciousness out of the sensate realm in 10 aspects. Focus, our focus is common consciousness and intersubjectivity, the common eye. Our new aim is to acquire and to reach for the universal. And we are participants in the movement of the first principle, which is the universal IDAS form. For Hegel, IDAS form is always movement. It's important to understand that. IDAS form for Hegel is always movement. It's always movement of IDAS form, and therefore he equates this with his concept of force. He says that IDAS form is a movement, always a movement, therefore it is force. Now, uh, force is the term used by Hegel for this movement of the IDAS, and sensate certainty is now reaching toward a higher understanding. And then note six, we begin with those determinations in isolation or the monad things acquired from sensate certainty. But consciousness itself needs to be within its own proto or preliminary concepts. We have the simple term names and each of those names encloses a multiplicity of attributes. Now here's your key um, moment for this 4a, we got to note 9, Aufgehoben, Aufgehoben, to determine the IDAS form, or the force, from the simple names we employ the process of uh, Aufgehoben, which is a three-part process, negation, preservation of the essence, and then transcendence above simple opposition. So negation, preservation, and transcendence. IDAS, we seek the pure, unique IDAS form of the simple names. And that takes us on to the process of uh, Aufgehoben, which is central. It's right in the center of our chart. It's central for um, Hegel's phenomenology. Now we enter into uh, 4B and look at uh, Aufgehoben. Remember that it is dialogical. Aufgehoben is dialogical. We're at the realm of the de Kunta threshold of a dialogue and the common eye and the uh, 
for itself and the for another of the concept. So Aufgehoben is dialogical. We have ten aspects again. Force together we investigate a triad consisting of the substance or essence, the attributes that enclose the substance, and the eventual um, emergence of the form as force, as a form that is in movement. Now thing evolves to force as substance evolves to subject. Now note three abstract universality presents itself to consciousness as a concept that needs to still be filled. It needs to be filled. We just have this abstract universality that it's asking, asking for fulfillment. And it is the Dakunta threshold in dialogue we employ an ensemble of faculties including memory and imagination and essence becomes the object within its own self-identity. Essence is now object as self-identity. Therefore, the object side is the true, the subject side is the doxa opinion. Doxa as opinion is something that we bring to the, the Kunta threshold of dialogue in order to refine opinion through logos argument in order to reach episteme knowledge. We go to the Dakunta threshold with our doxa opinion. And through dialogue and exchange, we refine doxa opinion through the logos of, of inter-reciprocal logos argument in order to evolve to the knowledge of Ida's form. So it's very much a process of a Dakunta threshold that employs these uh, ensemble of faculties and so if you look at note 7 we end up uh, with a imperative to partition the doxa opinions because we're going to end up with a we're going to present our opinions as to what essence uh, involves others are going to present their opinions we need to partition all doxa opinion into that which corresponds to the true and that which is mere illusion. Now where do you partition this doxa opinion material? Where does it partition? And that's where we get to note 8, a posited third party. The true evolves as that which reflects outside itself to a universal third party workspace. When we're gathered at the Dakunta threshold of dialogue in order to work through the process of uh, Aufgehoben, we will take the result of dialogue, the refined doxa opinion that has been refined through logos argument, and we'll, we will take the resultant universality of episteme, and we will file it in a mental workspace in consciousness, and that workspace is going to be like a, a, a virtual third party in the dialogue. We end up with a virtual third party workspace. And that's going to be our workspace for suspending and positing the episteme that we get from um, our doxa opinion being refined through the logos argument at the dialogue threshold of Aristotle's de Kunta threshold, which equates with what uh, Hegel's doing here as his process of reciprocal Aufgehoben. Aufgehoben through reciprocal dialogue of the for itself and for another of the concept. And that's note nine, dialogue. Concept evolves out of a dialogue between the for itself and the for another of the concept. And in this way, concept moves beyond thingism. So it's very, very comparable to Aristotle's de Kunta threshold of the dialogue that refines episteme knowledge. It refines episteme knowledge so it can become understanding, where it can become true understanding, and it becomes true understanding by refining doxa opinion through logos argument to reach the universality of an idas form that Hegel can, Hegel can only perceive as movement. Idas cannot be static for Hegel. Idas form is always movement. Idas form is still idas form. It is that universality, but it's always idas force. Idas form is Idas force for Hegel. So we apprehend this Idas force through the dialogue at the threshold of dialogue and working through the process of Aufgehoben which negates 
preserves and transcends in order to reach a true IDAS form as a true IDAS force. So it is a, a process that does preserve the essential as it continues through dialogue and refinement, and then it transcends that which we had apprehended in the intuitive realm to a deeper understanding of a true formation of IDAS as form and force. And so here we really did gain quite a bit because we moved um, through a two-step process for the dialogue threshold uh, for Jean Hippolyte. Uh, he says that the dialogue threshold is two-part. You've got the transition that leads to the imperative to get involved in Avgehoven. Then you've got the formal moment of Avgehoven. So the dialogue threshold for Hegel, according to Jean Hippolyte, is a two-part, two-step process of 4A and 4B. The dialogue threshold is 4A and 4B together. It is the transition to consciousness out of the sensate realm, which leads us to the imperative of Afghahoban, and then it is the formal process of Afghahoban, which does get involved in the refinement of doxa opinion through the argument of logos to reach the episteme of true understanding and true knowledge, knowledge of the objective true that is being held in reserve in a third-party workspace. And we're going to need that third-party workspace because we're going to work out of it to form the realm of the notion of the true, which is coming up, and the realm of positing. And all of that is going to be drawn out of this workspace of a virtual third party at the dialogue threshold of Hegel's work of Afghahoban. And so I look forward to what uh, Jean Hippolyte has for us in the next lesson, because now we will move on to an even higher cognitive level. We'll actually get into the working out of this uh, third-party result of episteme understanding that we have achieved. Now we'll get into the actual working out of it, uh, where we move on from there in our next lesson. But this lesson took us up uh, through intuition into consciousness, the transition out of consciousness into the true higher cognitive realm of understanding, which is a process of Afghahoban for Hegel. And the process of Afghahoban is at the dialogue threshold, with, which includes the for itself of the concept, the for another of the concept, and the third party virtual subject as a workspace to store the result of that dialogue exchange. That will wrap up our second lesson on the treatise on Hegel.